we're in the middle of the tenderloin right now. On the corner of Eddie and Hyde. Yeah, dude, and it's uh, it's pure chaos down here. This is San Francisco, dude. Uh, it's lawless. It's hustlers everywhere, but when you come out here, if you can't come out here and make some money, something is wrong. The age do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know? A month ago, we traveled to Sinaloa, Mexico to meet members of the cartel and to get a peek inside their operations, including their new billion-dollar fentanyl business. In Culiacan, the capital of Sinaloa state, hundreds of fentanyl kitchens operate throughout the small city, 24 hours a day, all cooking product bound for the U.S. We wanted to see the effects that fentanyl and other Sinaloan exports was having on consumers in the United States. That's why we came to the junkie capital of America, San Francisco. San Francisco is a city of extremes, one of the wealthiest urban areas in the country with median rent prices now higher than New York City. In fact, they say if the Bay Area were to secede tomorrow, it would be the ninth richest country in the world. And on the other end of that extreme, it is a city now infamous for having one of the worst homeless and opioid crises in the country. At the epicenter of this crisis is the Tenderloin an eight city block slum just west of downtown, home to thousands and thousands of street dwellers and junkies, virtually all of them openly using and selling drugs. It's been a nefarious place from the jump. Built out of the ruins of the 1906 earthquake as a collection of single room occupancy buildings, it even got its name as a reference to police corruption, as only cops on the take could afford the tenderest cuts of meat, hence the tenderloin. Today, the Ells is a neutral zone, sanctioned by the city as a decriminalized safe space for homelessness and drug activity. I'm not worried about the cops. The cops are not worried about me. I'm gonna give them their respect. You me? I, everybody got a job. But at the end of the day, as long as you give them their respect and don't make them look like assholes, they don't, I mean, they don't, they know what they, they know what we do. It's hard to believe it without seeing it for yourself. It reminded me of Hamsterdam from season three of The Wire. It's wild, it's, it's a different universe. We're surrounded by multi-million dollar apartments and in a four block radius, it's uh, heroin, fentanyl, crack, crystal, all of it getting slung. I mean Each block in the TL represents a different drug. So one corner might sell and use crack, the other weed or crystal meth, so on and so forth. But no drug has had an impact like the arrival of fentanyl. The amount of daily overdoses is staggering. How many times a day do you think there's an overdose just in this square? <laughs> Probably yeah. five or six times a day, would five you say? Five or six times a day. Maybe. I mean, you know, like in the stats are like one person dies every day, but not, not out here because we keep the community saturated with naloxone and drug users actually save each other, you know? The locals say that Fent is so pervasive now that it shows up in most of the heroin and crack that gets traded in the area. And one dealer told us fentanyl is even starting to show up in the weed. People overdosing. I didn't overdose twice. On uh, what? On a uh, on fentanyl. And I don't fuck with fentanyl. I, I used to snort cocaine, but somebody put it in the cocaine, and I didn't know. Why do you think people are putting fentanyl in cocaine? <laughs> They're putting fentanyl in anything, any everything, weed, gummies. Nearly everyone we talked to had either overdosed themselves or had witnessed an overdose. How the fuck did things end up like this? It goes all the way back. Long before it was a douchey, overpriced tech hub, San Francisco was an outlaw town, always has been. It grew up as a port city that had a reputation as a wild west, make your own rules up as you go kind of place. And it's always had a seedy underbelly of drugs, prostitution, and human trafficking. Home to the largest Chinatown district in the country, San Francisco was the first major market for imported Chinese opium in the mid 19th century and one of the last places to shut down its opium dens when the feds began a nationwide crackdown years later. It's always been a forward-thinking kind of town, attracting new ideas and new blood, a place where people come in search of something, or to get away from something. After the end of the Chinese opium den era, the hippie movements of the late 60s and early 70s ushered in a new era of drug use and experimentation with psychedelics like LSD, mescaline, and mushrooms dominating in neighborhoods like the Castro District and Haight-Ashbury. 
But then came the 1980s. That's when things really started to get fucked up. San Francisco, like every other major American city, got hit hard by the crack epidemic. That, combined with President Ronald Reagan's decision to eliminate funding for psychiatric hospitals, was the birth of the crisis San Francisco finds itself in today. Over the years, as more and more of the country's mental hospitals emptied, addicts from all over the country began flocking to San Francisco, and specifically, the Tenderloin, to take advantage of the city's liberal drug laws, favorable policies towards homelessness, and of course, an abundant supply of every kind of dope imaginable. We're told that black tar heroin, for decades the favored opioid of San Francisco and the West Coast in general, has all but disappeared since the arrival of fentanyl back in 2018. Yeah, over the last couple of years, we could actually watch. I ran a needle exchange program at Glide for a while, and we could see that our, the numbers of needles we were giving out dropped, and the numbers of uh, smoking implements like glass bubbles and things like that went up. So it was a mass migration to fentanyl. In fact, it's harder. I mean, in, you know, a gram of heroin in San Francisco right now is 80 bucks, and a gram of fentanyl is like 10, 20 bucks. Right? So it's like economically, people are forced to kind of use it that it's way. It's strong. San Francisco has a legacy of high-level drug trafficking, much of it facilitated by the Chinese gangs who populated the Chinatown district starting in the mid-19th century. First, it was opium. Then, in the 1970s, powder heroin from the Far East. Decades later, everything has changed, especially in the Tenderloin. Crack, meth, heroin, and weed, all of it has been eclipsed by the destructive power of fentanyl. While much of the drug trade of the TL operates on a bartering system, Many of the corner boys running the open-air drug spots are comprised of Central American immigrants, especially Honduras and El Salvador. But, as we later found out, everyone is working for Sinaloa. I mean, the drug trade here is a trip, man. Like, a lot of those kids, when you actually talk to them, they, they tell you that they're paying off the coyotes that got them across the border. They're like indentured servants, yeah. bro. They come across the border and they owe the 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 gangs that got them across the border money, and the way to pay them off is to come out here and sling for a while. Right. And like when you see mass police action that sweeps up and arrests everybody the next day, bam, there's more people out here. You know what I mean? And there because there's tons of people that came across the border that owe the money. My producer and I spent the afternoon walking the Tenderloin in UN Plaza talking to local residents. And that's how we met Jacozzi, a recent transplant from the Midwest. He worked as a long haul trucker before getting laid off and ending up here in the heart of the TL. It's always tender in the Tenderloin. Now in his mid-40s, he's been using drugs since he was a teenager. He agreed to speak to us, but not in the street, as he was worried about reprisals from local dealers. Place, you know, brought me back to life, so I, you know, this shit like, man, I live, you guys are gonna leave, but I'ma still be there. Yeah. He brought us up to where he was staying, a single room studio inside the Jefferson, a recently converted hotel to house the homeless population of the city. SROs like this one dot the Tenderloin, and while Jacozzi wouldn't admit it, it is city programs like these which attract homeless people to San Francisco from all over the country. His story is tragic, but not unique to the people of the Tenderloin, where lifetimes of pain and hardship often underlie drug use and addiction. I grew up without a family two months, you know, foster care system <sighs> here in America, but I overcame that shit. So it wasn't like, you know, if it was, if some people get molested and become molesters, you know? I didn't become none of that shit. Mm -hmm. I just kept it moving and kept the fact that, you know, struggled and made it, man. Fuck it, you had to do what you had to do to survive and, and did that shit. You grew up in the foster system? Mm-hmm, yeah, Wisconsin, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. You never knew your, your real mother or father? Uh, I met him later on when I was older, when I, you know, but yeah, I knew him. I still know him, my dad's pretty cool. He's a, he used to be a junkie, a motherfucking dope fiend, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he overcame that shit. I saw his story, so I knew I, I couldn't be a, I could get off anything if that nigga can mm -hmm. do it, anybody can, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was a goddamn chunky to the third power, oh, goddamn wow. it. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. come through your window and take your TV while you laying in the room and shit. Old school know? shit. Oh my God, it's when they were shooting and, you know, you know, in, you know mm -hmm. needles and shit, mm -hmm. you know? It was, uh... Calamity, man. Yeah. It was fucking calamity, bro. Yeah. That brought me here, man. Yeah. I lost my wife. I divorced. 
And yeah. uh, I had to keep working. I had to support the family and and myself. Shit, you know. I, I don't, you know. I wasn't planning on going back to prison and shit. I, it wasn't that desperate a time for me to uh, do no shit that I got went to jail for. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I've been around the world, man. And I always kept it real and honest with people, and I never had any problems wherever I go. I was a trucker. I needed to talk to somebody. I was losing my wife, my family, and shit. You know. And uh, shit was for real, man. It was. It was. We we had we stayed in the super suburbs. I came from the hood and did time, like I said. How'd you lose your job? The company I worked for went under. They didn't tell me shit. They tricked me to come here to give them their truck and not pay me. But I just was homeless, man, and shit. I got a, and I left all my shit in Milwaukee and let her have all that shit and left and you, dipped the fuck out and work. went to work. Yeah, man, this shit is not as, you know. It's just, I had to do it, man. And I did. And here I am. The motherfucker just said, fuck it, you know, I'm, I'm gonna stay here, you know? And it's way get my money. That's the reason I stay here for it. Initially, was to get my change from these motherfuckers. At, uh, don't fuck with these people. Uh, Express, what's the name of it? Uh, Accord Express. Trucking company, and I'm in suing their ass as we speak. Good. Yeah. And they're, they're the reason. See this calamity, and then they're self inflicted. All the shit that I went through was I was doing the right thing. I changed my life, you know. I smoke drugs sometimes. So fucking what? I mean, the corona and all this other shit. This is a lot of pressure. Motherfuckers ain't working any money, and fucking need to decompress, you know. And I would okay, do that shit, you know. It's not like uh, I was smoking dope and I fucked up my job and uh, my check and shit like yeah. that. No, that's not my story, bro. Right. I mean, just because we're in the same gang, don't mean we all the same, you know? When you got to San Francisco, did you know about the tenderloin? Did you nope, stumble across I Carter? found this shit accidentally going to sue the motherfuckers who fired me and didn't pay me. How does it feel every day waking up in the belly? Like in- It's not like a pressure, like... I don't be worrying about it like that, you know? I worry about what I need to take care of for today. Every day, every step of the way, when I was on the streets here, you know? I didn't do no foul shit, you know? I met some cool people, you know, neighbors, you know? And uh, good people, God bless me, and man, here I am. It's the comeback story, you know? It ain't about what I've been through, it's about where I'm going. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't sell anything, you know? I'm a fucking uh, addict, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm going through a lot of shit right now, and I'm dealing with it. How uh, how long were you smoking crack for? Shit, since I was, what, 17? Yeah. 46 years old now. Yeah. The first time I saw fentanyl was when I was in Phoenix, Arizona. It's an addiction, shit. That you know, everything is. But can you overcome it? Can you evolve and adapt? Like I said, man, this. I've seen some people that I know be addicted to the shit that I've been here. You know, I don't judge them. They don't judge me. You know, I don't. I don't judge my folks because they smoke crack or whatever the fuck they do. Everybody's trying to cope. It's fucking hard times in this country. Shit. <clears throat> you know, um, I'm a human, I make mistakes, I'm a Christian, and you know, I ask the Lord to forgive me, and he does, and I keep it moving, because I ain't doing no foul shit, but, <sighs> but I'm going to be okay, man, because I'm evolving to that every day, you know, yeah. it's just like, it's a way of life, man, you know, come here, uh, like I said, I can't work right now, it's like, Psychiatrist shit, man. She told me to decompress. I've been through a lot these last few years. Pain will change you. And that's what I went through. And that's what I I went through. Seven stages of grief. It was 23 years that I did this shit, man. I didn't never stop to think about it like, fuck, it's all over now. Because I kept going. But then God set my ass down. And Man, I had to feel those emotions and feelings and shit. And man, fuck, to deal with it. You had to deal with it. 
But I'm just letting you guys know, this is serious, man. This, this lifestyle is not a joke here, man. You know, if people get hurt every day down here, people are dying, people are overdosing, man. This shit's not a game. I see people die here, too. Wow. Yeah. How does that affect you? It mentally. Doesn't. Mentally. It's sad as hell that it's happening. But what can I do? It's not my business. I mean, I want to eat, I want to sleep, and I want to work. I'm an American citizen. I've worked my whole fucking life, man. And I just went through a hell of the time, a hell of a calamity. You know, losing everything and, and coming back. I mean, you guys might not think that because, you know, I'm smoking crystal. I don't know. I'm smoking weed, too, shit. So you don't worry that the fentanyl that might make it into crystal will cause you to overdose? I don't do it like that, bro. I mean, I do it if I got it. But can't a little bit? Isn't that, that enough? That shit can kill you. That's what I heard, you know? So you don't worry that, you don't worry about that, though? No. Why not? It's not a thought. If it's my time to fly, it's my time to fly. Mm -hmm. You know? Are you worried that your kids could start using drugs? They're already using drugs. Drugs are everywhere in this country. And if you got kids and they're going to be teenagers and you stay in the hood, they're going to probably use drugs. What kind of drugs are they using? Whatever the fuck the kid teenagers use, I don't know. <laughs> you see it. Now my kids smoke marijuana. I don't know if they're doing the pills and all that other mm. shit. Mm. I hope not, but... How do you pass the time? I read and I start, you know, I read books and... Just try to think back to uh, better environments that I lived in and stay positive and never be fake, man. You know? That's it, you know? Do you get lonely? It's, I'm a truck driver. I get lonely all the time, but I'm happy with being by myself and, and Jesus. Where would you like to go after this? I'm like staying here in San Francisco. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be in the Tenderloin or somewhere close around it, working here, probably going across the, the bridge to work, either one in the Bay or the Golden. It don't matter. And I'm going to get a better place eventually off <laughs> making more money and shit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm out, man. It's been a great experience, man. Why do you want to be so close to the Tenderloin? What's what's uh, attractive to you about it? Is it the I rent? I like the architecture the arch and the people. I love the people. I could talk to anybody here, you know. <laughs> like I'm talking to you guys. I don't know who the fuck you guys are. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Oh, my future is gonna be bright. I mean, I was if I would say no, I would, what kind of person would I be? Like, damn, I ain't got no hope. I'm just getting smoking, getting high and shit. Just no, that's not my life, man. I mean, shit, I do, but fuck it. San Francisco might be the most stratified city in North America, an embodiment of our society as a whole. The unimaginably rich pressed up against the poorest of the poor. And everywhere the drugs flow. And the money, well, that goes back to these guys. The most powerful cartel in the history of the narcotics trade, where billions are collected off the streets every year from people like Jacozzi. Out of sight and out of mind.